This video is made possible by the following sponsors. Make sure to check out their products as well as the rest of my gear in the description below. Hey guys, man who drives at Nordschleife too often here and welcome back to another video. In today's Nürburgring Hot Lap Challenge, I'm going to be going back to the mid 70s to drive Niki Lauda's Ferrari 312T. Now we've driven a few F1 cars around here in the past, but nothing is quite the same as this Ferrari. The car was powered by a flat 12, not an inline 12, uh, which produced about 510 brake horsepower. So whilst not being the most powerful car in the field at the time, it was one of the most reliable. In fact, it was pretty much famed to being one of the most reliable cars of the period. You might notice that we have a couple of very basic looking wings on this car, both at the front and at the rear. You know, it actually looks like I could lay down and take a nap on that rear spoiler, though I imagine my rotund body might affect the airflow somewhat. The aero is interesting on this car because there isn't really that much of it, which means we do a lot more driving, a lot more grip, comes from the mechanical side of things, from the tyres and from the suspension. That means that this car doesn't really behave like a modern F1 car, closer in fact to the cars of yesteryear. Lots of moving around the corners, lots of sliding and just a lot of fun in general. It's worth noting before we start that in 1976, the Nordschleife is where Niki Lauda had his massive accident, which left him with the severe burn scars that we see on his face today. And the thing that I find absolutely insane about that crash is that despite fighting for his life, just six weeks later, Niki Lauda returned to F1, returned to racing to score a fourth position finish at the Italian Grand Prix. He was then spotted after the race, removing the blood-soaked bandages that he had to wear in order to race comfortably. All I can say is what an absolute lad. Enough introduction though, let's go see what sort of lap time I can do in the Ferrari 312T at the Nordschleife. So here we are then in our usual starting position, but this time in Niki Lauda's Ferrari 312T. A couple of things before we start. First of all, to the right, you'll see we've got a speedo and gear indicator because some people have asked for it. So here it is for this video. And secondly, this isn't exactly the car that Niki Lauda had his crash in, the uh, famous 1976 one that I referenced earlier. This is the Ferrari 312T. That car he crashed in was the Ferrari 312T2. So a later iteration of the same model but yes enough rambling let's do some driving now i've also got my own setup on the car to try and combat some of the understeer this car has on the base setup but it does mean we now have a very very nervous rear end and you'll see that a lot as our lap gets underway so we're going to go down to first gear for the last corner bring it to the barrier accelerate on the apex there we go then so here we are our lap in the 312t break before the crest down to first gear, bring it in nice and neat and tidy. Touch the curb on the inside, it doesn't matter too much. Don't touch the wheel on the outside though. I'll get into wide in a second. Up into third gear. Just touch the brake on the way in to get the nose turned. There you go, nice. Up to fourth. And then we go straight from fourth down to second gear. Now this is where we have to really thread the car through these curves. Now, I always pretty much mention how bad a lot of these cars are on the curves around here, but this one is probably the worst. You do a lot of sliding in this car, it's the way this car drives. And if you touch a curb with your rear tire before your front tire, you will spin. There is no other way around it. So you might seem to be a bit cautious on this lap. That's why. Coming up to the flu patch now. A little dab of the brake before we go over. Still managed to lift off a little bit, which is good. Touch the first apex there and slide right past the second one. Good job, Jimmy. This car slides a hell of a lot. Hopefully that translates into what you're seeing. I feel it a lot in the wheel, of course, but I'm not sure what you guys see. We'll go down to third gear, just over this crest here. Sorry, fourth gear, get it in, nice. And then brake nice and hard and down to second. Bring it into the curb. The car complains slightly, but we convince it in the end. Don't touch that curb on the exit. I've crashed there before. You probably see the skid marks on the road. Now we get to absolutely plummet down the hill towards the compression. This is very fun in this car if you get it right. I very rarely get it right though. So down to fourth, turn it in nice and early. Touch the curb, then down to third. Nice and soft. At low speed, you have to be really nice and careful with this car. The rear end is looking for any excuse to come round on you. Even though this is a V12, it isn't particularly torquey. A lot of the speeds right at the, uh, a lot of the power is right at the top of the rev range. So. That's why you'll see me revving it as high as possible before changing gear. On that note, we do have a slightly amended engine RPM limit. Usually it's 12K. We've got it set at about 12.8 now. 
we've got a little bit more engine power at the top of course we wouldn't really run that in the race it would just end up blowing up the engine but we're in a sim so we can do whatever we like it's great but yeah touch of the brakes again to get that nose turned in now miss hit miss is interesting this car because it's more of a struggle just to get the car turned in it's not much downforce so you're just waiting for the car to settle before you can get back on the throttle even now i still understand it nearly crashed first gear again first gear this being a five speed is actually usable in this car which is nice now down the hill very easy to get sideways out of here so it'll be nice and careful on the way down still sideways the camera of the road there just lends itself to the car going a little bit skittish at the rear soft over the top there getting quite close to where Nicolau had had his crash now I'll try and point out when we get there this kink should be good in fourth gear the car will move around though quite a bit yep there you go and now down to second I'm gonna be careful through this right hand because I've already crashed here on another attempt we'll see the skid marks on the track in a second there they are hello past me goodbye past me up the hill now we'll snag fourth gear and we'll stay in fourth we haven't quite got the um to get to fifth up this hill now, Nicky's crash, if memory serves, was just after the left-hander hill, just before this right-hand kink. The car just snapped to the right into the wall, into the embankment, which is what's caused the, uh, the massive fire. Luckily for us, we don't have to deal with that. And our lap can continue, but it just gives you some sort of context of how fast he was going when the crash happened and just how lucky he was to survive. Coming up now to the carousel, got to be careful with the insertion here at the carousel because it's very easy to get the car stuck. So yeah, again, with most of this lap, be nice and soft on the way around. So we'll go down the second gear, try and get it in nicely. Okay, good. Again, you can see a big mark there. No, I get rejected. I'm going to continue the lap anyway, but I'm not really sure you should be going through the carousel on this car with this setup. It doesn't quite work too well. Third gear through here. Now, these curves are the worst on the circuit, so I'm going to be so careful through here, especially this one on the left. Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. It might look like I was really going slow there, that's about as fast as you can carry without any downforce. The car's moving around so much, don't touch any of the curves! <laughs> They're so scary! Downhill now, gravity working with us and against us somewhat. We can take the curb on the inside here. I'm just trying to bring it to the inside of the corner of the car, oversteering over the crest. And the second gear. This still is a little bit clumsy, this section in this car. Might, might just be the setup I'm running low, so hold second gear. YouTube corner, very easy to go wide here because of how the, how the camera changes. Now, very late apex in this left-hander. Nice, and the car sliding actually assisted us around that corner. Now, I've got to be careful over here. We can quite easily get air over this jump. So I'm going to just back off a tiny bit. Oh, we still get air, still off, all four wheels off the ground. That's not ideal. Soft through this left hand, and now we can get back on the throttle. We'll take fourth early just to control that rear end. Then just try and thread through here. There's the curve on the left we don't want to touch. Oh, the car is moving around so much. Down to third gear. Okay. It might look like I'm being cautious, that's because I am. You can see just how much the car is moving around. Anytime I look at the throttle, it's looking for an excuse to do naughty things to me. And usually I like that, but not on a hot lap. Coming up now towards the end of the lap, not too far to go now, but still very easy to make a mistake. Back on the throttle. Walk it to the outside the circuit. Now we can unleash that flat 12 behind us. Make use of that 12-8 rev limit. It almost sounds like some sort of weird Ferrari VTEC when we hit that, that level of uh, RPM there. Going to hit nearly 300 kilometres an hour here with a racing car from the mid-1970s. Rather you than me, crazy F1 pilots. Down the hill, back to where we started our video and passed it very quickly. Bit of left foot braking through there, then down to fourth, down to third. Try and straight line the braking, second gear. Not too bad through there, could have carried a bit more speed, but end of the lap now, so I just want to get to the end. Oh, I missed, I missed first gear, but not too bad at the last corner, and the time is a 6.43.0. So I think that puts us behind the Porsche 962, but in front of the NASCAR Cup car. Now, now bear in mind, Nicky Lauda's pole position lap in this car, the Ferrari 312T, 
was a 658 or 657, something like that. But that was including, at the time, the GP circuit, the very short GP circuit. So that gives you an idea just how fast they went, where I only managed to go about 15 seconds faster whilst cutting out that entire piece of circuit. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This took me a lot of attempts to record because I'm ill and I kept coughing and sputtering, kept crashing. So if you did like it, please hit the like button. If you really enjoyed it, hit subscribe to be notified of future videos. Take care, have an awesome day. I'll see you all next time.